back in our Father's Word, book of Exodus, the going out and the liberation of our peoples, being set free, entering the promised land. This is a type of what it is right today as we're approaching the entry into that promised land, which is the millennium age, how precious it's going to be. And these, these examples, as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, happen so that you know what will happen at the end. You know what consummates the end of this age. That's how simple it is. Today we come to that place in Egypt where the final... Um, uh, vial will be, I'll call it that, will be poured out upon Pharaoh and his children. That will be the firstborn of all animals and human beings dying that do not have the blood on the doorpost. And that blood, symbolic today, of the blood of Christ. So uh, that's, that's, this celebrates our high day in Christianity which is Passover. Chapter 12, the great book of Exodus, verse 1, a word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads, verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, <clears throat> this, uh, naturally, God's children go by a solar calendar in feast days. Why? Well, because the solar calendar never changes. It's the exact same as it was the day he created it. And uh, moons are not stable. They're not a full 30 days. Therefore, they're changey, changey, changey all the time. But the solar calendar at the spring equinox happens at the exact same time each year. And what, what this is, it was called at this time, is Abib, which is the Green Year uh, Feast. And it is ironic that um, we have certain American Indians that celebrate uh, the Green Year Feast, same basically time of the year. Something to think about. But this was to never change. And uh, it usually will always happen in March the 20th to 21st, one or the other according to what time, hour of the day that the sun comes north of the equator. Verse 3 to continue. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, don't leave anyone out, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. In other words, however, we, I don't want any of this left over. And um, uh, according to how large the family is, that's the lamb you choose. Verse 4, And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count uh, for the lamb. And, and, and so it is. In other words, I don't want any of this to go to waste. Why? Because it was symbolic of the Lamb of God. Okay. Verse 5. Your Lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, Verse 6, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And naturally, on the 14th of Abib, at sundown, what happens? You change to the 15th. In other words, the day, the next day on the solar calendar always starts at sundown. Therefore, they were already in that 15th day, which is to say Passover. It's the highest feast day of the Christian faith. It is still to this day. Why? Well, because as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, Christ became our Passover. And, and you either... And well, what is this table of the Lord then? Well, His blood, His body... He, he, he is that bread of life. And, and so it is uh, that 
he would be ultimately that Passover lamb. Now let's go with the next verse, please. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house houses wherein they shall eat it. Now, what does this do? Well, it is the same today as a Christian. With Well, what does Christ mean? It means the anointed one to all of our people. When you anoint the doorpost of your home with the all of our people and order in Christ's name anything negative to never cross that threshold. So it is. You have the power and the authority in Christ's name to do that. And here, this sets up whereby the death angel must pass over this house. Can bother no one in. Why? Because it has the blood of the lamb on the door. Just the same as today. If you have... If you are under Christ's blood shed on that cross, he became our Passover lamb, then the death angel, Satan, has no power over you. He must always pass over. That's what the very word Passover came from, is the fact that Satan must pass over you when you are a child of the living God, when, when you are under the blood that was shed on the cross, the very body of Christ that took the beating and we get the healing. Verse 8 to continue. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Well, why, why the unleavened bread? Well, because they're not going to have time to put in yeast, leaven, and let the bed bread rise and then bake it. You're, you're not going to have that much time. We're out of here. We're going to pull up stakes. We're gone. Also, in a figuratively sense, figurative sense, leaven stands for sin. And therefore, you keep sin out of your house, especially at this time, the high day of Christianity. And um, uh, you don't see this lamb in water. You roast it. And, and um, the, the way of, uh, you do not eat it raw as the Egyptians would. It's cooked well, it's clean, and so it is. Verse 9, eat not of it raw, nor sodden, don't you seep it in water, at all with water, but roast with fire. His head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. Um, the whole lamb, you roast it. Verse 10, and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. And that, as it is, I want nothing left of this. And here we have, um, and, and God is that consuming fire. And so it is. It's cleansing. God's consuming fire is the Holy Spirit that touches your heart today, that protects you, that comforts you, that cleanses you, and supports you, that lifts you, and enables you to live a good, healthy, joyful life. Verse 11. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. I want you, what does this signify? Well, what does it mean? What does it mean to have your loins girded? Well, men wore skirts at this time. And if you had on a, a skirt, so to speak, it was difficult to do battle with your legs inhibited by a, a skirt. Therefore, you took your belt and pulled it between your legs and pulled that up whereby your legs were free. You got your shoes on, you're ready to travel. You're ready for action. And you've got that staff in your hand that if anybody should bother you, you can take care of business. In other words, you are in the ready position. 
and um, and, and so it, ready for action, ready to return, ready to do God's work. That's what it means. Verse 12, for I will, not maybe, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, here we see the purpose. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, well, God is going to destroy the firstborn. Hey, about ten times he has sent plagues to show the Egyptians that he's got. Not some stick, not some frog, not something they've dreamed up as a god, but Almighty God. I want you to remember chapter 7, verse 5. Can you remember it? I've called your attention to it about twice now. It's God's purpose. So the Egyptians would know that he is God. Whereby what? Well, they can have salvation also. They are his children. And he does this not to destroy them, but to free the children of Israel through which Christ would come but at the same time destroy all gods in Egypt that uh, they worshipped to show he was in power, he was in control, that he was the Lord God Almighty. That's the whole point. And, and you know, if you can't see love in that, even though there was some destruction, God will be very patient for a long, long time. But when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, when it comes time for action, he finally will get your attention one way or the other. Thank God that we that serve him, he has our attention always. It makes you a lot happier life than someone that strains at the, the hornness of, of uh, this confused world and lives in such ungodly atmospheres. But God wants to destroy these little gods and show these people, I am God. Verse 13, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. That's where the word Passover comes from. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this is why it's so important when you equate this even to this day, why it's so important that you have the blood of the Lamb that shed on the cross, that you're under it, that you love him, you appreciate what he did for us. On that one Passover of all Passovers, when he was to sacrifice the one sacrifice for one and all times, it was sufficient that the blood of the Lord would cause the death angel to have to pass over your house, that that is negative, Satan, at any time when you made that declaration, when you were under that. That is God's promise. I will pass over. That's why it's the high Sabbath of Christianity. It can happen any day of the week when it's reckoned from the 15th day of, of uh, Abed and some by Nisan, uh, the name change, but uh, from the spring equinox. It will always be that first month. Verse 14, And this day, shall be unto you for a memorial. Don't you ever forget it. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever and ever and ever. You're not going to change it. This is why that for for this is why again, and I keep repeating myself that this is the high day of Christianity, and it, it is a little sad that 
uh, well, I'll, I'll go into that a little bit here in a moment. 15, seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. You keep sin out of your house. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened leaven bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. For that period of time, this was pretty serious. Keep sin out of your life. That's what leaven stands for, is sin. Give that time to God. Now, of course, I have to say that inasmuch as Christ has become our Passover, that we have to stay with him every day. For he is with us every day. That is the beauty of Christianity. That is the beauty of the forgiveness of sin which leaven brings forth. Verse 16. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. In other words, both the first and the last become a Sabbath, a high Sabbath. And naturally, the highest of Sabbaths was the one on the 15th. And as it follows, how precious it is that our Father creates this memorial. But again, I want to repeat that in 1 Corinthians in the New Testament, in chapter 5, in verses 6 and 7, Christ became our Passover. So Passover is for Christians. I know a lot of people will say, well, I thought it was not for Christians. Well, how can you say that when Christ is our Passover? You would certainly be lacking knowledge if that were the case. Well, I thought they called it Ishtar. Well, you see, that's where there's a great era. The word Ishtar is only used one time in the New Testament in the book of Acts. But when you open the manuscripts and you read what that word was in the Greek tongue, it's Passel. Passel is Passover in the Greek tongue. You can take any college dictionary, Webster's, and the third edition comes to mind. Look up the word Easter, Easter, and it will tell you it's a pagan holiday, and it was for that time. Do you know what they did on that pagan holiday? They went out and rolled eggs of fertility. It was a, it was a sexual um, act in the forest every spring, and then coming in like quick like a bunny. It was, it was, and then that was brought into the church. It should never have been. But hey, no, no problem. The thing is that you should know better. And I have given you, even in modern literature, the way to prove it, that what I'm saying is right. It's, it's not that difficult, quite frankly. All you need is a strong concordance. Check out the word Easter. And you'll find it doesn't exist. It's Paschal, Passover. Why? Because Christ became our Passover for one and all generations. And if you want the devil, if you want the destroyer, which is, that's one of his names, to pass over your house, then you had better know and understand what our Passover is that causes him to pass over. It's the blood of the lamb. And that lamb is the lamb slain, which is to say Christ. Uh, how precious it is. Okay, let's go with the next verse, please. Verse 17. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. I'm going to free you. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. How long? Forever. And don't you let anyone change the name of it. Don't let them rob you. Verse 18. In the first month, Abed, on the 14th day of the month, at Eden, that's when the 15th begins, 
You shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Nineteen, seven days. Shall there be no leaven found in your houses? For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. The cut off means set aside. It doesn't mean you're going to hell. But it means you're not going to participate in the high Sabbath. Verse 20. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. You will keep sin out of your houses. Verse 21. And then Moses called for all the elders of Israel. And he said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Verse 22, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel of the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. You will stay behind that protecting blood. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts. The Lord will pass over the door. There again the word Passover. That's what Passover is. And will not suffer the destroyer, that's Satan, to come in unto your houses to smite you. It's not going to happen. How precious it is that uh, we know that the destroyer, why does God in the seventh chapter of the great book of Revelation put the seal of God in the forehead of certain people? So they know the truth and they're not deceived. And why is it uh, that he would even have you under this protection when he would write in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, here comes another lamb. And this lamb has horns uh, like uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, like the lamb slain. But he has the voice of a dragon, meaning it's the false Christ. So you want to be well prepared. You want to have that blood on the lintel, which is to say the blood of Christ shed on the cross you want to be under that. Christ is our Passover. If you have Christ in your heart, the destroyer must pass over you and, and uh, your house. Uh, verse 24. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Now this is... So many people are not aware of the fact that the house of Judah and the house of Israel split. And they want to try to put all of the house of Israel in one little tribe, the tribe of Judah. You can't do that. There were 12 tribes. And naturally, the tribes that migrated over the Caucasus Mountains were later called Caucasians that settled Europe. Many later migrating to Canada and the Americas. They are that house, and they are to recognize this Passover, the fact that Christ became that Passover. And that truth is to be taught from generation to generation and not be robbed by would-be so-called teachers of God's word, whereby they probably would never even bring this word forward and leave people in ignorance. Uh, how amazing it is. You know, our people celebrated a Passover in a certain town, and the good citizens, uh, I mean, we have quite a, quite a gathering at Passover. It runs up into the thousands, and, and naturally the merchants want to be good to us, so they hired this big bunny. And here, here our people are meeting in this Passover, and in comes this big hippity-hoppity bunny, quick like a rabbit. Our people are always very, they took it very well. I mean, they, they understand commercialism and what happened, but how funny it was, you know, 
that they would try to do this to our people, trying to please them. Hippity hoppity, hippity hoppity, quick like a bunny. And, um, and pretty soon the bunny realized he was not being sought after, so he left. Thank God for that. Anyway, our Father wants us to carry this on forever. It's that important. It is the high Sabbath of Christianity. It is the day God wants you to truly touch him and be in touch with him. It only comes once a year, but then it is celebrated 50 days later and, and, uh, and many months later in the fall. Verse 25, And it shall come to pass, when you become to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that you shall keep this service. And so we do. We do keep this service. Verse 26, And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? Why are you doing this? It's real easy. You teach them. Passover is a time of teaching. It is a time that God always gives us fresh information. It is a time that God unlocks scriptures that have been locked for many years. That he lets us see what's happening. Why? Because we observe his high Sabbath. The high Sabbath of all Christianity. It is very pleasing to Almighty God. But you tell the children why you're doing it. Teach them so they know what happened in the past. 27. And you shall say, this is what you're going to tell them. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshipped. Worship the living God. Why? He takes care of us. And at the same time, he was teaching the Egyptians. Did they learn? Well, that, that could be questionable. But some did, because some are Christian. Verse 28, And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And, and so it was that uh, they were free. 29, And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat in, on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of cattle. I mean, they, they were dead in a hammer. God always keeps his word. 30, and Pharaoh rose up in the night, and he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, well, you can imagine. For there was not a house where there was not one dead, firstborn of every house. And, and so it was that God got their attention. Isn't it, isn't it sad that, some, that God would have to go to this extent to get their attention? They have lied, they have cheated, They've lied to Moses, they've lied to Aaron. Initially with God hardening the heart, but they, they didn't take much help. Verse 31, And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, Pharaoh did, and he said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. 32, also take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Try, try to leave a blessing for me. But here, finally, he's beginning to get, the, God got his attention, and, and now, I mean, they want to be rid of these people. Nothing but heartache has come from this. And, and if they had only listened to the father coming out the gate, how easy it would have been. Verse 33, And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people 
that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. They're killing us. We're dying from the torture, the hail, the flies, the frogs, the darkness. And now the firstborn, dead. Get them out of here. Verse 34, and the people took their dough before it was leaven, and their kneading troughs uh, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. They're packing up. 35, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, as God had instructed, and jewels of gold and raiment. They had earned it. 400 years of captivity, 36, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. They, they took it. They loaded up. They left out a lot richer than they went in. Why? Well, they were pleasing God. This is why you must always be a pleasure to our Father, because he loves you. He loves his children. And that's why he went to this extent, not only to save the house of Israel, but the Egyptians that would finally adhere to the word. Passover, you bet, the high day of Christianity. Don't miss the next lecture. All right, bless your hearts. Listen a moment, won't you please?